What's up my stat stars? Before I begin, go ahead and hit that subscribe button for me. I really appreciate it. So in this video, we're going to cover question number five from the 2025 AP Statistics free response question. And it dealt with the number of bedrooms and houses. Now this was a multi-focus question. It dealt with a little bit of basic probability and expected values, and then it turned into inference. Let's look at it right now. So according to a 2017 survey, in country B, the mean number of bedrooms in a newly built house was 2.9. Rodney, a researcher, believes that the mean number of bedrooms in newly built houses in the country was different in 2024 than it was in 2017, so he doesn't think it's 2.9 anymore. To investigate his belief, he looked at a large random sample of newly built houses in country B in 2024 and recorded the number of bedrooms in each house, and the distribution of the number of bedrooms can be seen in this table below. So 12% um, of the houses had one bedroom, 22% uh, had four bedrooms. You get the idea. I'm not going to read the whole table to you. All right, now this question had three parts, and part A was a house from the sample will be selected at random. What is the probability that the house had fewer than three bedrooms? Just got to be careful to remember that fewer than three means not including three. So fewer than three would simply be one or two, and you can't have one and two bed, uh, house or uh, bedrooms in the same house. So it's going to be one or two. So to get that probability, all we have to do to find the probability that the number of houses is less than three is take the probability of one plus the probability of two. That's 0.12 plus 0.22. We get 0.34. Pretty simple math there, not overly complicated. Now the next question is, what is the mean number of bedrooms for the sample? Now this is where you got to remember a pretty basic format because it does want you to show your work. To find the mean number, all you have to do is take each outcome multiplied by its probability. So I'm going to multiply 1 times 12%, 2 times 22%. You get the idea straight down the line all the way to 6 times 0.02. Then I'm going to add all of those values together. So here is that work. Again, I'm showing all of my work, multiplying each outcome multiplied by the proportion of households that have that outcome. And I got a total of 3.1 bedrooms. Now, of course, I used my calculator to actually do that work, but make sure you have that work shown. They definitely want it for the fact that it said, write the problem, show your work. All right, part B also has two parts, and it says, all right, Ronnie's going to do a one sample t test for the population mean to test his belief. And that actually makes complete sense. He only had one sample. And that was his sample from 2024. And it's going to be a t-test because the problem deals with means. He obviously does not know the standard deviation of his population. But anyway, the first question says, in the context of Ronnie's investigation, state the hypotheses for the test. Now, the first thing I want to do is make sure I define my parameter. So I'm going to make sure I say that mu is the mean number of bedrooms for houses in country B in 2024. The only thing I should probably have done that would make that a little bit better was the mean number of bedrooms in newly built houses in country B in 2024, if I wanted to be a little bit more exact there. Sorry about that. Now, the null is that it's just the same as it was in 2017, and that was 2.9. So we're assuming that the mean number of bedrooms in newly built houses is still 2.9. And the alternative is that Rodney thinks it's different. Now, go back and look at the problem if you need to. It never said he thinks it's more, he thinks it's less. It just said that he thinks it's different. I'm going to go ahead and show that word right there. And that is, of course, why we're going to use that not equal to signs. That's really, really important there. So hopefully that one was a pretty easy one as well. Now, the second part wants us to explain in context what a type 1 error would be. So in general, let me briefly remind you, a type 1 error is when the null is true. So it's true that the mean is 2.9, but the mistake is we reject it and think it's something else. So here's my write-up for that. I think it's pretty good. A type 1 error would be when the mean number of bedrooms for houses in country B in 2024 is the same as it was in 2017. That's 2.9. So it's the same as it was. It's 2.9. But Rodney mistakenly rejects the null and concludes in 2024 the mean number of bedrooms in newly built houses was different than it was in 2017. So basically, he thinks the mean number of bedrooms has changed, but it really has not. The null is true. It's 2.9. It's the same as it was in 2017. But the error is that he thinks it has changed and it's something different. All right, moving on to the final part, C. A different researcher, Kaisha, suggests using a confidence interval to investigate whether the mean number of bedrooms in newly built houses has changed from 2024, and that it's different than 2.9. So we want to use a confidence interval. So assuming all the conditions for inference have met, 
Using Ronnie's data, Keisha calculates a one sample 97% confidence interval and her interval is 3.01 to 3.19. So based on the confidence interval, what conclusion can be made for Rodney's hypothesis test back in part B a significance level of 0.03? Well, the first thing I notice is her interval. This means that she is 97% confident that in 2024, the mean number of bedrooms in newly built houses for country B is somewhere between 3.01 and 3.19. Now that entire interval does not include 2.9, which should tell Rodney to reject the null. So at the 3% significance level, Rodney should reject the null hypothesis and conclude that the mean number of bedrooms in houses of country B in 2024 is different than it was in 2017. This is because, like I'm saying here, the entire interval is above 2.9, or just the fact that 2.9, that was the mean in 2017, is not in the interval at all. So we do not believe that 2.9 is, in 2024 at least, the mean. This interval, as I already said, we're 97% confident that the mean for 2024 is in this interval. And guess what? We don't think it's 2.9. So this should give Rodney the evidence he needs to conclude that the mean number of bedrooms in newly built houses in country B, and that's a mouthful, has definitely changed. All right, that's it for question number five. Overall, not too bad. It's, you know, a couple little tiny details you got to remember there. But I think it was a pretty easy question. Hopefully you did really well on it.